Welcome to the Invested Dads Podcast, simplifying financial topics so that you can take action and make your financial situation better, helping you to understand the current world of financial planning and investments. Here are your hosts, Josh Robb and Austin Wilson. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the Invested Dads Podcast, a podcast where we take you on a journey to better your financial future today. Josh, we got a fun one. It's going to be an episode where we talk about saving. That's right. We'll be working on our CPR training and also practicing the defibrillator on each other. Well, actually, I was talking about saving money, but uh, if you're suggesting we play with the defibrillator, that seems shocking. Uh, That's true. But we should... No, I'm not doing that. That sounds horrible. Don't do that. That's not safe. (laughs) Don't ever, but anybody ever try that. I actually do have my training in the defibrillator. Yeah, I did about 10 years ago. And all that, and I keep it up to date. But it's even scary when you're like practicing on the dummy and they give you like, this defibrillator is just a toy. Like it's not the real one. You just, you know, it lights up or whatever. You're still like, I don't want to feel like you're doing, playing operation with real voltage. Yeah, Yeah, it's not cool. True story though. At our church, we have a defibrillator, and there's one of the guys in our church. He's on our safety committee, and he checks them periodically to make sure their batteries are charged and all that. So he checked it one day, and then after church, they had uh, men's basketball. He, the guy who checked the defibrillators, actually had a heart attack collapse, and they used those defibrillators to save his life, the ones he checked. I'm that glad morning. that he found out it worked. Yeah, so it's just crazy, crazy. So... You know, we make sure those are up to date, but it came in. I mean, it saved a guy's life. Hey. The the guy guy who checked it that morning to make sure they were ready to go. That is what it's for. Yep. So, yeah. Kind of give us a brief, kind of a breakdown where we're going today. It's a new year, right? Let's talk about saving in a new year. Yeah. So, you know, when you think budgeting and, you know, one of those pieces of your budget, like we talk about, we just had a podcast on budgeting. True. uh, Savings is a piece of that, right? You need to account for a portion of your budget to go towards savings, whether it's short-term savings, long-term savings. So today we're going to talk about that. So what types of accounts could you be saving in? So we're going to look at the account types. How much are you allowed to save in each account? There's certain restrictions on some accounts. Um, what is the average saving that people do here in the United States? I think that's always it a good benchmark. It may shock you. It may shock you, like the defibrillator. Like the defibrillator. <laughs> and what's our recommendation? Yeah. That we'll kind of wrap it up with that. Exactly. So let's kind of take that from the top there. Mm-hmm. What accounts are there to save? And we came up with a list of about six. There's many. There's more. What are some types of accounts that there are to save? And actually, I think we did an episode on account types where we yeah. kind of talk about this, and we'll link this. There's a few episodes we'll link to yes. previously that might be some it's good tying together background information. Um, but let's start at the top. A taxable account. What is a taxable account, and what might that be used for? Yeah, so the term taxable is pretty explanatory. Wait, is that, it taxable? Yes, it has tax along the way. <laughs> it's taxable. It's taxing along the way. Um, a good example of that would be emergency fund, which we did a episode on recently. So a taxable account is whenever I sell something, I owe tax on that transaction. At the end of the year, if you I'll made get, money, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it's a taxable. You know, I could maybe deduct it if Correct. it's a loss, right. but it's a taxable event uh, on a sell. If I get interest in that account, I'll each year owe tax on that interest. Or dividends. Or, or, yeah, any kind of income yep. that comes in. You know, if you municipal, then it's tax-free, but it's still a taxable event. You just are allowed to op- offset it. So taxable accounts are great. What is an example of that? Emergency fund, right? That's, yeah. you know, when we talk emergency funds, we you need access to that money. You don't want restrictions. Taxable accounts are nice because the restrictions are pretty much non-existent. Yeah, and then depending on what kind of account you actually put that in, just even like a high interest savings account, that interest you're getting is taxable. Yeah. So that's kind of it's, yep. it's kind of where we're at, and as tar- as far yep. as taxable goes, um, let's talk about savings for health expenses because you know what, health expenses are not cheap. Right. And they get more expensive the older you get, mm-hmm. and they don't get cheaper over time in general. So, what is an account you would use for health expense savings? Yeah. So there's a couple different types, but the main one most people will see would be an HSA, health savings account. HSA. Uh, So what that is, is if you have a high deductible plan, you are allowed to have an HSA along with it. And an an HSA account is nice because you get to put money in, get a tax deduction on that. So it's a tax-free contribution. It grows Mm tax-free. And if you use it for healthcare expenses, there's no tax owed. 
So it's a very nice account. Beautiful. Very nice from a tax advantage. And so, and we're going to talk about this on our next section, but there's limits to that because it's so nice. But that's a, so again, we're talking savings. So if you're looking at carving up some pieces, saving for healthcare costs is a good idea. Right. HSA is a nice place to save. Now, depending on where you work and what plans you have, you may have other types of health savings plans where yeah. maybe they put money, your, your, your corporation, your business puts money in and then you have a set amount you can spend. Those type of savings accounts usually go away. So if you don't use it at the end of the year, you lose it. HSAs, it's your money. It stays there year after year, even if you don't spend it. So yeah. there's all different types, but HSA is the most popular. Yeah, I think one of those other options is a flexible savings account. Mm-hmm. Yep. If that's not with a high deductible plan necessarily, that's with other lower deductible yep. plans typically. And that's where you'll have some money put in there. You can use that for your healthcare expenses, but typically that does not roll over or whatever, those kind of things. So health savings, that is one next bucket. Uh, Another bucket is company retirement plan. Yeah. So that would be 401k or if you're in the nonprofit world, 403b. There's a couple other ones that they're kind of strange numbers and letters, but in general, those are the main ones. You know, 99% of people have one of those two if they have a retirement plan. So they're nice. They're pre-tax most of the time. There's some options for after-tax Roth 401ks, but in general, it's pre-tax, meaning you get to deduct that from your income in the year you make your contributions into it. A lot of times the company will also match. And so if you put in a certain percent, they'll also put in some, so it's free money. Also like to point out within there, there's other types of retirement plans like simple IRAs, SEP IRAs. There are other things that maybe your company has, they're all the same in that they're pre-tax. And so they all grow tax deferred, meaning you're deferring or putting off taxes. Taxes will be owed later, but you get to at least grow tax deferred for a while. And these have become super popular since the 80s mm-hmm. or so, I yes. think I've read, as the the retirement savings or the way that people are funding their retirement has drastically changed over those couple generations or whatever. So think back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, into the 80s, and some even today, but you're really lucky if you have this today. But a pension was a big way that yep. you had a lot of your retirement. And uh, the longer you're there, the more you get. And it's great. You can pretty much write it out. But those have become, it's been it's become more tax adv- advantageous, I think, for corporations and for companies to offer 401k plans and matches through that uh, at, over the years, really since the 80s. And that is really where the majority of people's uh, retirement savings is going to be held nowadays. Yeah. And part of it has to do with its, it, there's costs associated with the two. The other part is as people are living longer, if I am a company and I offer a pension for the lifetime of this employee and they're living into their 90s, it, whereas you know 20 years ago it was living into their maybe late 70s, early 80s, you know, that's more I have to fund. That's right. a lot more cost associated. And so it, it gets harder. So pensions, like you said, are. are getting few and far between. Uh, So most of the time you're going to see some sort of 401k plan. And it's set up that the employee has a responsibility, whereas the pension is really the company's job to put that money away. Um, So yeah, Yeah. it was, I mean, it was very common that you could retire without putting a dollar into the stock market Mm -hmm. back back in the day. And now that is just not the case. So that is company retirement plan. Now think about retirement savings on your own. Yep. So personal ones, you would have IRA accounts, either a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. Now IRA stands for? Individual retirement gotcha. account. Gotcha. So it's yours. Uh, so you open it. You it's tied to your social security It's tied number. to you. Yeah. Yep. So I can't share it with my spouse. It's my account. My spouse can have their own, but we don't share one. You can't have a joint account. So those are great in that a traditional IRA is pre-tax. You can get a deduct- deduction. And then a Roth IRA is after tax and it grows tax-free from then on. So two great ones. That's another saving for anybody. So as long as you have earned income, you could use those up to an income limit. Right. And well, you know, that's, we've talked about that in the past and account types and stuff, kind of where those, where those sit. But in general, most people will qualify for that. So another way to just have a catch all yes. is a taxable account. Like we had talked about savings accounts with interest payments, that's taxable. Taxable accounts can really be used for a ton of things, but kind of just if you have another whole bu- a bunch of money you don't know what to do with, you can put it in a taxable account and do whatever you want with it, yeah. and that's what that's for. Yeah. So it's not and necessarily this is after your emergency yeah, fund. Don't think emergency fund. This is think brokerage account, just a savings account, account whether you can invest whatever you want, like an, yes. yeah, an investment account. Yep, and that idea is it's again it's taxable, so you pay tax along the way. But the restrictions are less. And as we get into these re- limits coming up, we'll talk through that a little bit. But the idea there is 
I can put as much money as I want into this type of account and it grows taxable along the way. So right. I control the taxes when I choose what I'm doing. Yeah. Now, the last one. Last one. Not important. used as much. And in fact, I don't use it at all, but I did at one point in my life. The good old piggy bank. Good old piggy or the, bank. Or the coffee can in the cabinet. That's right. Or the bag of cash in your backyard. Yep. So the other way of saving is just accumulating the money yeah. physically, just yeah. having it with you. And so we'll talk about that. So let's get into limits, all right? So we just had an episode on emergency fund. And so if you recall, we said the target... Roughly, the rule of thumb is three to six months of living expenses. So again, we're not going to go into all the details. You can list that episode. But when we're talking limits to saving, there's no mandated limit. But we say three to six is a good amount to have an emergency fund. Yeah. And uh, I guess that while there is no limit, it actually can. It does not help you above a certain point because your money's not working for you. It's sitting there for if you need it. But... If you shouldn't have more than you would need because it's just sitting there, Correct. generally speaking. Oh, earning very, very little. So, yeah, there's a point where that becomes a good thing to have, and there's a point where it becomes there you can put your money somewhere else and it'll do better for you. Uh, yeah, so back to HSA, health savings accounts, yes. very important in today's world. Going to be very important for our generation's retirement, mm-hmm. I have a feeling. Um, so what are the limits on that? Yeah, so if you're a single person, so yourself on the plan, so it's just you on the plan, you could be married, but if you each have your own retirement plans at work or whatever, $3,600 per year is what you're allowed to put in. If you're on what's considered a family HSA, meaning there's more than one person on your high deductible insurance plan, yep. you could do 7200 which if you do the math is double the single, yeah. which to me actually hurts people with families because right. if I have... Me and my wife, that makes sense. It's double what the things. But if, I, kids. if you add yeah. kids in there, there's costs associated, but I don't get to save any more for each of those additional kids. So just and a kids, side note on that. And kids, you know, in general are going to... They're the ones that go to the doctor They're going to go to eat up your deductible. They're and... the ones licking the ground and stuff and getting sick all the time. <laughs> so back to retirement, kind of revisiting the 401k, 401, or 401k, 403b limits. Now, this is where... Uh, if you're under 50 or over 50, there is a difference. And we also had an episode about that. Yes. So we'll link that in the show notes as well. But Josh, briefly, what are the limits yep. if you're under 50 first? Yeah. So in 2021, if you're under 50 years old, you could put $19,500 of your money into the retirement account, 401k, 403b. Yep. When I say your money, that means if the company's matching, that does not count towards that limit. Correct. So I could put 19000 in if my company does like a 4% match. Their match can go on top of that. It does not take you out of your right. limit. And then Once if I you're cross that over 50, 50 right. that big magic fun birthday, I could then do an additional 6500 which brings the total up to 26000 Yep. The reason we do that, we talked about it, it's called a catch-up contribution, meaning... At 50, you're a lot closer to retirement than you were you know, prior to that. I guess every day the same is true. I'm every time one day closer to retirement. <laughs> yeah. But in that 50 is kind of like you're hitting that final stretch. And if you're behind on your kind of your retirement planning, they give you that opportunity to put more pre-tax money in. And the assumption is probably in your 50s, you're probably earning about your max salary yeah. at that point. And so if I can get some savings on my tax, that's also nice as well. So you get an extra 6500 Now, they do periodically adjust those numbers. So keep an eye each year. If you're maxing out your 401k this year, always check, check to see, did they increase it? They usually do it in like 500 increments every couple of years. This actually, I think, has been the same since 2019, which, again, inflation has been so low, that's part of why they haven't moved it. But keep an eye on that. So let's revisit the contributions to your retirement that you do on your own yes. or the things that you've done with your old retirement plans or whatever mm-hmm. if you're rolling over. So the Roth IRA, traditional IRA limits, Josh, what are those? Yeah. So Roth IRA and traditional IRA, the contribution limits are the same. So again, we use that 50 thresh mark. If you're under 50, you could do $6,000. If you're over 50, it's 7000 They give you an extra $1,000 catch-up contribution. Um, and so again, those are your your money going in. Um, and for the traditional and the Roth, one's pre tax, one's post. You think, well, you know, should I be able to put more in the post tax because I'm, you know, I'm paying tax? Well, no. If you get the same rate of return and you have the same tax bracket, you actually end up with the exact same amount of money yeah, either way. It's just so when your tax is before paid, after, right? but it's when your tax bracket changes when there's an advantage to one or the other, yep. which is when planning comes in. But in general, you can put the same amount in both of those. So I think the government was sitting there around the round table, the knights of the round table, and they're like, so it's really a bummer to turn 50, right? 
So we Let's should give people some bump, some like bumps in their retirement contribution limits when they turn fifty. It makes me wonder if they're ever going to move that age up as people live longer. Does fifty right. ever become 50 is, sixty? Fifty is like forty, what it was thirty yeah. years ago. Yeah. So I wonder. It'd be interesting. They have yet to. That's one of the numbers they really haven't touched. They moved RMD ages. They moved a bunch of ages, but fifties kind of stayed there. We'll see what happens. It's really a good thing. For yeah. people, if, oh, you it know, gives you longer a, yeah, time. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. As people work longer, it gives them extra years for catch up. So I already kind of think I know the answer you're going to have for this, but uh, Josh, what's the limit to a taxable account? Yeah. So there is no limit. What? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so since it's money that's been taxed and will be taxed along the way, the government says we don't care what you do with that. We're yeah. going to get our tax. You have billions of yeah, dollars. You could, yeah. There's no limit uh, to what you put in to a taxable account in any one year, um, which. Is great, and it also is a nice bucket. Now, we talk about all the tax savings for 401k and a Roth IRA, even an HSA. Great. But tax savings come with restrictions. HSA have to be used for medical expenses or else you get a penalty. 401ks, Roth IRAs, traditional IRAs, all those, if you're before 59 and a half, 10% penalty. Taxable account, no penalty. Do what you so want. It's a nice bucket. Yeah. Even though you're taxed along the way, capital gains taxes are usually at or below what your effective tax rate is. And so, you know, it's it's not that bad of a deal to have a piece of your assets in taxable money. True. The last, but not least, what is the limit to the good old-fashioned coffee can or yeah. piggy bank? Until it is full. You know, once it's, the money doesn't go in anymore, That's you, right. you can't and add you take it. it to the bank. Uh, but in general... Th- we put that in there kind of as a joke. You know, that's, you know, when you think of kids saving, they have their little piggy bank trucking in. But having cash, accessible cash at home or somewhere close by is nice just for, and we've talked about this, you and I, you shake your head all the time, but the person comes to the door and you need to buy those girls. That's my easy out. Oh, man. I got no cash. But in general, having some access to cash somehow is good for emergencies. The limit is, again, at what point is it deterring my long term growth? Hey, in case all those in- conspiracy theories come true and you need to have cash on a, hand, you need a cash on hand. <laughs> I'm more just worried about tolls. So, it, oh man. So, I was, we were on vacation in Florida a few years ago and we were driving back from my cousin. My cousin lives in Florida. Hey, Jacob, what's up? If you hear this, you wave to him, I wave to him on a podcast. But uh, we were driving back to the resort or whatever we were staying and he lived close to Daytona. Mm hmm. About an hour and they have a half. They've raced there, don't they? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. About an hour and a half from uh, we were staying near Orlando, and so we had to take toll road back. Beautiful drive, nice driving through Florida. It's pretty boring. It's Florida. Well, we are on toll road, and I have cash, like dollar bills, cash, but quarters, not so the many. Quarters, yeah. And the I had plenty of cash to cover my toll, and we got off in the exit that we needed to to get back to our resort, and. They only took exact change no. because there was no one working it. Yep. And there was a bucket you had to drop it in. And I was in a rental car, too, mm-hmm. of all things. So I had to take an envelope like they let you do. And I had Mail to it in. And I had to go home and write a check for a dollar seventy five and mail it to Florida. It was dollar seventy five plus postage. I know. So that was another fifty really cents or whatever. It. So anyway, my uh tolls, yep. man, they get me. They do. That's why you everyone That's why you need fast access pass. to cash. Fast pass. Oh, that or cash. I, I have now in my both my vehicles a little stash of just quarters and stuff just because I don't want to get caught without low tire pressure. Anything where I just need a quarter. Like there's been too many times where I just need change. The all the cart at Aldi, mm-hmm. you need a quarter for. You need a quarter. That's yep. how they never. You'll never see an Aldi cart floating around no, Finley. You gotta put it back because you got If you want your quarterback, you gotta put your cart back. That's genius. That's right. Someone right. they real okay. So we took a break. We took let's, a, let's. We're gonna take another break. Josh, take a break I from a break. I've got a dad joke of the week for you. I hope I haven't used this one yet because this is hilarious. Okay, I'm ready. Josh, how many tickles does it take before? You can make an octopus laugh. Now, I know this one because my kids love this joke. But I'm going to let you tell me because I just want to hear you say the words. Okay, so I'm going to rationale this with you because it is not anything to do with octo meaning eight. No. Nope. It means, or the answer is tentacles. 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 Because they have tentacles. Because they have tentacles. I I thought that was funny. I like that one. All right, so let's. That we, we were just happy. We we're riding a high. Now we're going to get depressed. Yes. Let's talk about some depressing numbers. So, what do savings look like? You know, for average Americans here, you know, in America. Yeah. So uh, I was looking through some articles, and 
was reading through and it varies depending on what reports you see. Um, but in 2019, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, which they, pretty do, reputable they do a pretty good job, uh, they said, and this is 2019, the average person had 78635 in gross earnings. So they just looked at the earnings on everybody here in the United States, which amounts to 67241 after tax. So just average person making 78000 gross, 67 net. Okay. So then they said, okay, how much does this person spend? So they did their little, whatever they do for their statistics. Found the average person spends $61,224. Yep. Which leaves, math in my head, $6,017 left. Or in other words, unspent money. Right. Or in other words, savings. savings. Yeah. So that's money that didn't get spent, so it's saved. So if you do a percentage, then that's 7.66% of their total gross gross earnings. Yeah. Or just about 9.8% of their net earnings. Okay? So uh, I have a feeling I know that that is going to seem quite low. So, and I read a couple other articles. Everywhere I read, somewhere between 6 and 8%. So I'm thinking everybody's using gross numbers, but somewhere between 6 and 8% is what they said the average American says. And that is, that is general. A bulk, the bulk of that is going to be contributed to retirement. 401k. Uh, then there's going to be any other savings. It's just any savings, savings that you're not spending. Yeah, so but, the number somewhere, and I would stretch it even to say between 6 and 10% is what the average saving is in the United States. Gotcha. Uh, so when we look at retirement planning, we do a lot of that here. Um, we talk through, and even in the industry, it used to be 15%. What's the number? Yeah. Save 50, get to 15% uh, savings and you'll be fine. Well, people are living longer cost of living, healthcare costs are going up. The new number is about 20%. So somewhere between 15 and 20% is the target people should be saving. Right. Um, and that's not like emergency fund saving. That's a retirement savings. That's saving for your future retirement. Right. So if I have a short-term goal of, hey, I need a new car, that's not part of my 15 to 20%. That's on top of that. So again, you can see it's probably closer to 20 to 25% of yep. your savings in any given year, depending on what your short-term goals are. And so again... Looking at, let's just use the high net number and just say, you know, that's that's great, nine nine almost ten percent savings. We're still halfway to where we should be. That's not good. That is not good. And then a TD Ameriprise actually had a survey in 2019 as well. They surveyed 2,000 people, so you know, not a huge survey group, but they the requirement though of those 2,000 people, they had to have at least twenty five thousand dollars invested. All right, so they've actually done some savings. These 2,000 people have. At least twenty five thousand unfed. They found sixty six percent of those people who were in their forties had less than a hundred thousand. Hmm. Okay, so you think about retirement and savings and what's needed. And we've we've talked about some of those numbers, kind of what your target is along right. the way. And then twenty eight percent of those two thousand people who were in their sixty in their sixties had less than fifty thousand dollars saved in their sixties. Yeah. So they're at the edge of retirement. You know, they're right. within walking distance yeah. of the door there to get out and they only have fifty thousand dollars saved this makes me feel that the obviously the numbers aren't lying you know the vast majority of americans are planning on being nearly entirely dependent on social security yes. for their retirement mm-hmm. and let me tell you what that is not you're not going to have the retirement you want if you that's going to be a stressful not fun re- retirement retirement was retirement was not designed to really be reliant on social security right social security is there is the safety net it was created as a safety net for those that you would at least have your essentials taken care of yeah. it's not designed to support your full retirement lifestyle and you know how we probably got here because a lot of people as they've changed jobs and changed companies they've made some what we would say probably unwise decisions with their rollover 401ks they would just cash out Mm -hmm. when they move jobs they would cash out anything they could that they've accumulated for benefits just as soon as they could regardless of the penalty over time and it's probably put a lot of people behind the eight ball yep and then not only that but you know if you look at parents and generations past like you mentioned pensions covered a lot of their income in retirement and so they kind of maybe were taught that you know, don't trust the market, those type of things. And well, the pension is not available for you. The thing that they could rely on to help supplement their retirement. Right. And now you're stuck having to learn from that, that difference. And um, I think going forward, we'll probably be seeing some changes. They've been talking about having some kind of required savings programs or having auto 
enrollment. Right. So you have to be rural, enrolled. You have to opt out instead of opting in yeah. to retirement plans, which I think are good ideas because it forces people to save. And sometimes that is needed, especially young. You know, When you're in your 20s, you get your first job. If they force you to put 4% in to get that match or something, you're going to be thankful 30 oh, years down absolutely. the road when that money's compounded and something you may not have done because you wanted to spend that on a new car or something, you're forced to save it. It'll, it'll pay off down the down down yeah. the road. So we see that people are generally falling short of what was recommended for you know savings in general. What would we suggest people do to kind of remedy that? Yeah, it depends. <laughs> Man, so everything in moderation yeah, or whatever uh, the normal job. So answer first is. and foremost, like we've always said, emergency fund is highly, highly, highly important that you focus on that first. Yep. And so you know, like we said, twenty percent savings for long term retirement savings. Yeah, not if you don't have an emergency fund right. because you're going to put money in 401k, have an emergency, and then be Couldn't forced to pull out. that right back yeah, out yeah. with a penalty Without and penalty, get less right. money than you would have had yep. to begin with. So first and foremost, you need that emergency fund, top priority. But we say make it a goal to get to that 20% threshold. And I would say once you hit the 20 see if you can get beyond that because that'll only help you give you more freedom and flexibility down the road. Especially the earlier in life you are. Yes. Oh, yeah. The more you can Each, do when you're young. If that percent, if you're doing... 20 plus percent when you're young. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be doing awesome. Yep. Just keep in mind though, this doesn't happen overnight. No. So if you listen to this podcast and say, you know what, I want to get serious about saving this year, I'm not doing anything. I don't expect, and I would be surprised if you found a way to save 20% in the first year. Overnight. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah Where's yeah. that coming from? Right. Uh, so it doesn't happen overnight, but find ways to create that habit. Mm -hmm. Savings is a habit. And if you create that habit over the long run, you'll be able to build on that foundation. And so we've talked about this, but there's a 50-50 rule. So what it means is every time you get a raise, take 50% of that raise, increase your savings, take the other 50%, add it to your budget for inflation. And so if I get a 4% raise, 2% goes to increase my savings. So if I was at zero, I'm now saving 2% of my income. And then the other 2% goes in my budget. Next year, if I get another 4% raise, I'm now saving 4% because I added another 2% there. 2% goes in my budget. Mm -hmm. Next year, if I get a 4% raise, I'm now saving 6%. And that works up. I'm getting mm -hmm. to 20. Now, that's a great way of doing it. Well, and the, what the, the other benefit of doing something like that is when you go to retire, you're, you're, rep on you're reliving on less. So you need less to maintain your standard of living. So the money you've already saved yep. lasts longer. There's a lot of benefits to yeah. that. And we talk about our emergency fund. Any unexpected money comes in. Throw that towards savings. So birthday, graduation, anything where it's like, hey, here's some extra money I wasn't expecting, savings. Company match. So we talked about 401k, 403b. Those are the simple IRAs have a match too sometimes. Those are the spots where if the company's offering you free money to save, take it. Can you beat free money? Oh, man. You can't the, beat The rate of return money. on yeah. that is great. Well, so That's just something I heard at one of my, at my old job. People would say no. And they'd say, yeah, I can go get that in the market or whatever. And the truth of the matter is, if it's match of any kind, there is no way you're going to get even close. 100% match every dollar right. is pretty hard yeah. to get um, unless you unless you're like, by Bitcoin last year, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But uh, in general, you're not going to get there. No. And so... Get that get that match. And I would even argue, get that match even while you're still trying to do some of your other goals. True. Because that's money you're never going to get back. They don't come back. Oh, here, let me pay that match you didn't get last year. No. Nope. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, emergency fund, top priority. Then after that, it's the match. Yep. Yeah, another one is just don't forget to take advantage of your HSA. Don't forget to take advantage of your Roth IRA. These are some tax-advantaged, mm -hmm. you know, savings vehicles that you can have for health savings or retirement. Yeah. Just don't don't forget yeah. about them. You know, if you're in a high tax bracket, chances are you can't do a Roth IRA. So focus on the ones that can. But yeah. in general, for most people, a Roth IRA is probably an option that you should at least consider. Um, look at what what your tax bracket is. Talk to your tax preparer and just say, hey, if I do a Roth instead of a little more my 401k, what's that look like? Is it worth it? I like multiple buckets. I like a pre-tax, a post-tax, and a taxable. Those three buckets are nice because it gives you more flexibility. And don't forget that if you've checked off all the boxes above and you got money left over, shove it in a taxable account. Or if you have a short term goal. Or if you have a short term goal. Yeah. You, so, yeah. You want to have you be able to have access house, to it. Right. That should be a taxable account. Put it in a taxable account. Yep. You can grow some money and, and have, do whatever you want, whenever you want with mm -hmm. it. Not a problem. That's great flexibility. So those are the vehicles that we would suggest. I guess, yeah, make 2021. This is a new year. Make it a year of saving. Just make little changes. Like Josh said, you know, these aren't things you're going to be able to do overnight, but 
you know, let's just take a step and get a little better. Even if it's fifty dollars a month yep. to get that habit started. Yep. Automate it, make it happen automatically, and get that habit started. And as always, check out our free gift to you. It's a brief list of eight principles of timeless investing. These are overarching investment themes meant to keep you on track to meet your long-term goals. Investing is some of those things we talk about. So check that out. It's free on our website. Josh, how can people help us to continue to grow this podcast? Yeah. First of all, subscribe so that you get the most recent updates. Every Thursday. Every Thursday. Every Thursday. And leave a review on Apple Podcasts if that's where you listen. Any great ideas or topics, shoot us an email, hello at the Invested Dads, or if, if you just want to say hi, we'd love to interact with you and see how you're doing. If you think someone is interested in this savings topic, make sure you save share this episode with them. The idea there too is, you know, maybe you could start a conversation and work through accountability where you say, hey, let's do this together. Let's start saving and set these goals. So that's the things that we'd love to see happen and hear about it too. All right. Well, until next Thursday, have a good week. Yep. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Invested Dads podcast. This episode has ended, but your journey towards a better financial future doesn't have to. Head over to theinvesteddads.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in today's show. If you enjoyed this episode and we had a positive impact on your life, leave us a review. Click subscribe and don't miss the next episode. Josh Robb and Austin Wilson work for Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. All opinions expressed by Josh, Austin, or any podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. Clients of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. There is no guarantee that the statements, opinions, or forecasts provided herein will prove to be correct. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Indices are not available for direct investment. Any investor who attempts to mimic the performance of an index would incur fees and expenses, which would reduce returns. Securities investing involves risk, including the potential for loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment plan or strategy will be successful.